So on the, on the 21st of April 2017 at Stellenbosch University and Tigerberg Academic Hospital, we performed a penile transplant. The operation took nine and a half hours, which was a little bit longer than the previous case because of the blood vessels that was quite difficult to reconnect in this case. How, how the patient is doing it at, at the moment and from the, the first uh, day post-operatively is quite remarkable. The first time he saw his penis, he was uh, quite emotional and he couldn't believe that after 17 years he has a, a penis again. He was extremely happy. He is certainly one of the happiest patients that we've seen in, in our ward. He is doing from a mental and a physical point very well. We took him back to theater once for a very minor debridement of, it took less than 30 minutes, of some skin that died on the skin edges. This was corrected and at the moment, at about a month, he's doing as good as he can. There's no signs of rejection, there's no signs of dead tissue, and all the structures that we reconnected seem to be healing well. The, the operation is quite a technical operation. As we know, it's called a composite tissue transplant. So lots of different types of tissues, including nerves, blood structures, blood supply structures, as well as tissue, erectile tissue, and also the urine, urinary structures, in addition to the skin, have to be reconnected. What we transplanted is the visible, or also called the pendulous penis. So regarding the functions of the, of the penis, we expect him to have normal erections that will allow him to have normal sexual intercourse. We also, and, uh, we also expect him to have normal sensation of the penis. Now the sensation uh, uh, comes from the nerves that we reconnected and they grow back at about a millimeter per day. So we think by about six months he should have full uh, regeneration of his sensation. The erections we think should be normal at about three months, maybe a little bit later and then he, sh he should have a normal orgasmic function as well, a normal sexual function. Standing of urination is very important uh, to our recipients and for them to stand and urinate should be after six weeks. There is a color discrepancy between the donor penis and the recipient and this will be corrected at around six to eight months with medical tattooing. Uh, these transplants that we've done is part of a, a proof of concept study. So we in South Africa have got a problem with ritual circumcisions that lose quite a number of males with our genitalia or mutilated to various degrees. Um, sometimes these young people also die from the circumcision, but we are dealing with the ones that are mutilated to the degree that they lost, lost the whole penis. And there are quite large numbers, even though we don't know exactly what the numbers are. So for us to try and get a cost-effective solution, that is the main goal of the study. So here at Stellenbosch University and Tigerberg Academic Hospital, we are committed to find cost-effective solutions in our own environment. Um, the, the team of surgeons that did the operation consisted of myself, a plastic surgeon, Dr. Alex Zolke, a, another urologist that is trained in microsurgery, Dr. Amir Zarabi, and a transplantologist and uh, a traumatologist, Dr. Um, Zamira Kaiser. So we are with the main surgeons, even though we were supported by a team of regis registrars and anesthetists, and then of course the immunologists that help with the immune suppression while we were even operating. The organ was harvested from a 29-year-old a multi-organ donor that we also harvested the kidneys from, uh, the skin and the corneas, and his very kind family consented to us uh, using the organs for transplantation. So we are extremely thankful towards the family for doing this very gracious deed. Regarding our first transplant that was done on 11 December 2014, this patient continues to do well. We are extremely happy with him and he is mentally and physically doing extremely well. He's uh, urinating normal, uh, his, his sexual function is, is returned to normal. Uh, on the last assessment that we did formally, his quality of life assessment, you can see that he virtually uh, are forgetting that he had a penis transplant. He's carrying on with his life as normal, having normal sexual intercourse, but also the normal factors in life affecting uh, everybody else is also affecting him, like work stress and, and those things. And the fact that he's lost a penis and gained a penis, it, except for the fact that he has to take medication, that's a little bit on the back bench. He's really now living life normally.